All right. Okay, the light is on, and we can get started this evening, and welcome, everyone. Um, I'll call the meeting to order, and would you like to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, Allison, please. Olson. Here. Sykes. Yes. Bessie Johnson. Here. Kellum. Here. Alex Johnson. Here. Coburn. Here. Canopa. Here. Okay. Thank you. And I didn't see so yeah. Okay. Um, we do have a couple public hearings and this evening. Um, and then also we will have business from the public. I think there's probably some folks here that would like to speak on a couple of the items, which one would be about the um, um, city property that's at 401 Main. So, um, but we will proceed first with the public hearing. So on our agenda, and I gotta get a, read a script here, so bear with me folks. Um, on tonight's agenda is a quasi-judicial public hearing regarding a zoning map amendment from residential single-family RS 6.5 to residential single-family RS 5 on the property located at 840 Airport Road as described in planning file ZC 0319. I call to order this quasi-judicial public hearing at 7.17 p.m. If you wish to testify, please sign in at the table next to the city clerk. Do any members wish to declare a conflict of interest? Do any members wish to report any ex parte contact? And do any members wish to report a site visit? I drove by, but I didn't really look at it. That's, I think, probably everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. And do any members wish to abstain from participating in the proceedings? Okay. Does anyone wish to challenge the participation of any council member in this hearing and decision? Okay. For those wishing to testify, please be aware that you must raise an issue with enough detail to afford the council and parties an opportunity to respond to the issue if you later want to raise that issue on appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals. Testimony and evidence must be directed towards approval standards, staff will describe or other criteria in the comprehensive plan or development code which you believe to apply to the decision. If additional documents or evidence are provided by any party, the city council may allow a continuance or leave the record open to allow the parties a reasonable opportunity to respond. At this time, I call for the staff report and planner Melissa. All right, thank you very much, Mayor and Council. Um, tonight is a public hearing for a proposed rezone of a property. And the uh, rezone is from uh, one residential zone to another, from RS 6.5, where the average minimum <coughs> lot size is 6,500 square feet, to an RS 5, where the average minimum lot size would be 5,000 square feet. And uh, this is uh, technically it's a quasi-judicial <coughs> map amendment because it deals with a specific property instead of a, a large area. And the zoning map amendment criteria is under the Albany Development Code 2.740. And um, uh, we're required to notify the Department of Land Conservation and Development, which we did um, on July 10th, um, at least 35 days before the first public hearing, uh, which was with the Planning Commission. Uh, we also sent out a public notice before that planning commission hearing uh, to property owners within 300 feet of the, the property on July 29th for that hearing. And also August 9th, we posted that property all according to the, the rules of the code. And so the planning commission had their public hearing on this uh, property on uh, August 19th. <laughs> And they unanimously made a recommendation to the city council to approve the proposed rezone. And tonight we have the public hearing and the final decision rests upon the city council uh, for this proposal. So this just illustrates the existing land uses. Uh, the property is uh, marked in red there and it's currently vacant. Surrounding it is residential uses. Um, just to the south of it 
is some office use. Um, uh, Interstate 5 is just to the east, and the uh, airport is just e east of that. Just the west and of that. so the property uh, this illustrates is RS 6.5, and also the surrounding properties are zoned RS 6.5. And the underlying land uh, uh, land use designation per the comp plan is low density residential. And so that is for this property as well as the surrounding properties, <coughs> low density residential land use designation. So the RS5 zone, which is proposed, um, is compatible with that low density comp plan uh, designation, and that is a minimum requirement. And um, it's uh, um, also, um, in terms of the cr criteria, it needs to have adequate utilities, which are there to serve uh, this property if it was zoned RS 6.5 or if it was up zoned to RS, RS 5. So there's adequate utilities uh, to support that. In terms of trip generation, there was a traffic study, and it showed that in the PM peak hours, there's just a difference of nine more trips of what was the underlying assumption compared to if this was rezoned from RS 6.5 to RS 5, the, at the PM peak hours there would just be nine more trips. So I, I believe that um, one of the reasons the applicant has proposed this rezone is because there's a number of constraints on the property. There are a uh, fair amount of wetlands, um, there's also um, oak trees and that they would like to preserve as many as possible. Um, there's um, an additional setback because of the location from the I-5 right-of-way. There's additional setbacks required for that. And so uh, with a slightly higher density to the RS-5 zone, um, it would allow a little bit more compact development. The applicant um, is here to answer any questions um, so they can explain further about their proposal and like that. But um, in the staff report, staff did analyze all of the criteria and had found that all the applicable criteria were, were met. And the Planning Commission had recommended approval. Staff recommends approval of the zoning <coughs> amendment. And tonight, after the public hearing, the decision for the City Council would be either to approve the proposed rezone or to deny it. So if you have any questions for me, I'll do my best to answer them. I have one. Mm -hmm. There is an upcoming uh, ODOT change. Who knows when that's going to happen, but... The inner... inner uh, the, yeah, the where they mess up Airport Road. Yeah, yeah exactly. It was the I-5 interchange yeah. study plan. I was on that committee, and I was mm -hmm. seeing it wasn't really made reference in, the, um, in your report here. Mm -hmm. My question is, mm -hmm. is there... In, was that taken into account by whoever is... Mm -hmm. dealing with it yes well we we did notify um, mm -hmm. ODOT of the proposal and I think if there is to be a proposed development um, that then it would take into consideration any access if any would be allowed and as well as right-of-way um, and there was no uh, but at this time, there's no proposal to develop the land. So that's not under consideration. It's just the, the zoning. And um, there was, from ODOT, there was no um, objection or, or comment or con concern for the proposed rezone. So did you, did they send you what that study was? Because there was the, you know, proposed for kind of blocking off airport road. Um, where it wasn't going to be accessing Sandy M. So was was the maps looked at to see where it would go along the mm -hmm. road? Sure, sure. I mean, we've been looking at this property in pre-applications conferences a number of times with different uh, proposals, and each time our transportation analyst, Ron Irish, is always very cognizant mm -hmm. of that, and we communicate that. But that's more related to a specific development um, and, and in, in terms of there, there is not necessarily a concern in terms of whether the average minimum lot size for the residential use is 5,000 square feet or 6,500 square feet in terms of this, this proposal. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that answers mine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then you had noted in here that the TSP um, does include sidewalk improvements <coughs> along Airport Road, so that'll be taken up when they have their bring in their site plan um, oh, sure. to make sure that the <coughs> sidewalks would be oh, yeah. constructed. Yeah, yeah. Then, then we kind of get down to the nitty gritty of mm -hmm. those kinds of things, frontage improvements, right of way dedications, things like that, as well as mm -hmm. uh, on site improvements, infrastructure. Yeah. I've never liked this process because in the past we used to do them together, yeah. zone change plus with the site plan. So you could be able to see that site plan before you mm -hmm. gave the zone change, but yeah. I know it. it I understand it is frustrating. At the same time, we cannot condition um, a zone change on a development, and in the end, someone could present something. We grant the the zone change with the. Um, thinking that they're going to develop that, but then they could decide, you know, I just don't want to do that, the economy changes or whatever, and there's nothing to force them to pursue that. So it's kind of a catch-22. Um, um, I know the, the developer in, intends to develop it, but until and, 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 and when they actually submit something, we, and when it's approved and they actually break ground is when it's actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. More questions? I do. Yeah, Dick? We hear occasionally that they're thinking about putting another lane on the freeway. And is there enough room in the freeway right of way to add another lane without yeah. moving airport road over? Do we know that? Well, I think that's that's in the long term plan. Or, well, um, yeah. I mean, if they're going to expand I 5. Um, I don't think it's going to be going beyond the existing right-of-way that they have, which their right-of-way includes, um, I believe, the, the airport road. So um, detailed questions about transportation, I'm afraid I probably want to refer that to Ron Irish, our transportation analyst, because he's dealing with well, that. It would be a shame to have to move the road right up next to somebody's front window or whatever. Well, that does happen here and there. And right. I, to see I think, I, you know, in our pre-application conferences, we're always looking at, and ODOT typically would have present representation there or comments about the possibilities of the whole interchange, you know, and the, the changes to Airport Road, and we're always taking into consideration, you know, there will be some uh, right-of-way dedication always in those assumptions and also limited, if any, access onto that airport road. Mm -hmm. oh, see, they're not going to be able to come out of this development on the airport road? You know, I'm, I'm, I'd have to refer, refer to Ron on okay. that. From my memory, I'm thinking that, that we had limited, if any, and that the, the existing access would have to be used, but I'm just going by you know, months ago, pre-application conferences of, of that. But like I said, the, I this, we'll assume all is well. the, the, this is just an application for a zone change. And so we don't have a development proposal, um, you know, before us. And so if we, when and if we have the development proposal, then it's gonna be going through the whole uh, land use process like we typically have, you know, likely to be site plan review, su possibly subdivisions like that. So I see Ron Irish coming up. So <laughs> you Ron, may as well come all the way up. Can, yeah. you, can you tell us how this um, plays out it? with the I-5 interchange study proposal? So uh, ODOT started an I-5 interchange study and never finished it and never adopted it. They, we started it, put it on a shelf. Mm -hmm. um, Is it still on the shelf? It's still on the shelf. So that they concluded that the project was so big they'd never build it in one piece. They would build it in pieces. And at the end of the pieces didn't require the environmental assessment that was the, what they were doing. And so they would, as they built each piece, they would take that piece off the shelf and deal with it. So part of what the, the unadopted ODOT study showed 
was that ultimately Airport Road would be disconnected from Highway 20 yeah. with a cul-de-sac somewhere near the manufactured home park, so south of this site. Mm -hmm. the, um, the most recent ODOT analysis showed that there would be some right-of-way take along the frontage of this property. That's back in the I-5 study that wasn't adopted. <coughs> Uh, in reviewing the zone change, one of the ODOT staff provided a letter that said they didn't think any right-of-way would be needed here. So in my mind, it's a bit ambiguous. Uh, the point in time we would find out is when an actual development application happened here. We kind of flushed ODOT out of the weeds at that point and find out will there or will there not be right-of-way take along Airport Road. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. There's enough right-of-way on I-5 add an additional through line on the inside of the existing lines. Uh, the problem here is, and there's enough right-of-way to add a through line on the outside. Uh, the question of right-of-way take boils down to where the off-ramp goes. And they really aren't far enough in the design to tell us precisely where that goes, and that's why I think we're getting, you know, over time, different explanations from ODOT staff about whether right-of-way will or will not be needed. So it'll be a question that comes up when this property develops, whether it develops under the RS 6.5 zone designation that it has today, or if it develops under RS 5. Either way, we're going to have the same question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Thanks. You. Refreshes my memory, because I do believe it was probably a good 10 years ago yeah. when we did start that process. So, yeah, yeah. It, it seemed strange to just cut Airport Road off here at the southern end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, any counselors have any other questions? Okay, all right. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. Um, we will now take testimony from the applicant. Would the applicant please come to the podium, state your name, address, and make any comments you may have for the commission. Mr. Catlin. Hello. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Rich Catlin, 424 Montgomery Street Southeast here in Albany, representing the applicant Mike Schultz, who is the owner of Well Built Homes. I want to thank Melissa for her staff report and all the details that are in it. We support the findings and conclusions in the staff report, and we're thankful for their support for the zone change. As Melissa mentioned, the staff report explains how the zone change complies with the decision criteria, but as has already come up, you're wondering about the reason for the zone change. And there is a brief explanation of that in the applicant's narrative. It's on page 18 of your packet, page two of that narrative. And Melissa uh, was right in saying that there are uh, substantial areas of wetlands on the property that's already been delineated. There are a lot of oak trees on the site that people are interested in protecting. And as she mentioned, there are noise corridor setbacks that affect the development potential of the site. Um, Melissa can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's a 50-foot setback, and it's measured from the property line. So it's from yeah. the west edge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, when Mr. Schultz is ready to develop that property, whether it's under the current RS 6.5 or under the proposed RS 5, he'll have to comply with that 50-foot setback for any residents that's on the property. Uh, we looked at alternative methods to a standard subdivision, such as cluster development, and concluded that all things considered, this zone change was the most appropriate way to go in order to recover some of the lost development potential. I will note um, that the property fronts on Franklin Avenue along the north. That's a local access residential street. And all of the discussions so far with city staff and with the neighbors have been that access would come off of Franklin. And whether or not that connects to Airport Road could be immaterial to the development of the site and whatever happens with the ODOT corridor. So all that to say, there's, there's not a site plan for, for you to review. There is ample street frontage along Franklin Road for this property to develop, irrespective of the future of Airport Road. That's why we're asking you to decide the zone change simply on the merits of the RS5 zone. Um, a preliminary development plan was presented to 
uh, about 32 people at the April 29th neighborhood meeting. Uh, they had uh, a lot of comments about the plan and those have been taken into account for revising the plan. Uh, and as soon as this zone change is approved, we'll be ready to submit that plan for uh, city review. Uh, they had concerns about the amount of traffic, improvements to Franklin Avenue, and what's going to happen to the trees. Uh, it's also important to remember that both the existing zone and the proposed zone are single-family zones. As Melissa said, the, we're not asking for a change to the uh, overarching comprehensive zone, uh, our overarching comprehensive plan designation of single-family residential. The key difference, as she mentioned, is that there is a smaller lot size in RS5 that allows the owner to recapture some of the lots lost to wetlands, trees, and the noise setback. Uh, as Melissa said, there will be another chance for staff to review a detailed development plan for the neighbors to comment it, on it and for any changes to be made in order for it to comply with all the requirements of the code. So now that you have support from both the Planning Commission and the planning staff, we're asking that you approve tonight the zone change to RS5. And I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Okay, questions? Okay, all right. <coughs> Thank you, Rich. Mm -hmm. um, we will now be taking public testimony. As I recognize you, please come to the podium, state your full name and address, spell your last name, and make any comments you may have for the council's consideration. If anyone wishes to enter an exhibit into the record as part of your testimony, please briefly describe it and then present it to the city clerk. All right, no one had signed up to speak on this um, um, zoning map amendment, but is there anyone here that wanted to sp um, speak in favor or against um, this application? Okay, all right, not seeing anyone. Um, um, does staff have any response to any of the testimony presented by the applicant? Okay. Um, does anyone have any procedural questions they would like to raise at this time? All right. Council, do you have any questions? All right. Then with that, I will close the public hearing at 7.37 p.m. And Council, what would you like to do with this item? Move to adopt. We've got to read this ordinance first. What's that? Yeah. Would you like... Would you like our city attorney to read the ordinance? Yes. Yep. Go for it. Okay. First one. <clears throat> that's, what the, that's what it says. An ordinance amending ordinance number 4441, which adopted the city of Albany zoning map by amending the Albany zoning map and adopting findings for the property located at 840 Airport Road Southeast, Lynn County Assessor's map number <clears throat> 11S-03W-09BB, tax lots 2700 and 2701. I move that the ordinance be read a second time and title only. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, second reading. An ordinance amending ordinance number 4441, which adopted the City of Albany zoning map by amending the Albany zoning map and adopting findings for the property located at 840 Airport Road Southeast, Lynn County Assessor's map number 11S-03W-09BB, tax lots 2700 and 2701. Move to approve. Second. Okay, motion's been made in the second. Um, is Rich and Al Alex. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions, any comments? It wasn't Rich, it was me. No, you moved oh, to I was thinking for the second, it was the two of them on the second. But Mike made the motion. I thirded it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any comments? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Melissa. Um, a quite, let's see. Also, a quasi-judicial decision of the City Council may be appealed to the Land Use Board of Appeals by filing a notice of intent to appeal not later than 21 days after the decision becomes final. 
Within five working days following adoption of amendment or new land use regulation, the director shall forward to the Department of Land Conservation and Development a copy of the adopted text and findings and notify the department of any substantial changes which may have occurred in the proposal since any previous notification to the department. Okay, with that, we are done with that item. And next at 7.40 p.m., I'll open up the public hearing and this will be for the Community Development Block Grant Annual Report. Anne. Thank you, Mayor and Councilors. I'm Ann Catlin. I'm a planner in the Community Development Department and I get the opportunity to tell you about what has happened with the Community Development Block Grant Program over the last year and that would be the 2018 federal year, but it corresponds to our 18-19 fiscal year. Uh, this hearing is a chance to comment on our performance, but it's also an opportunity to hear suggestions and ideas for future needs within the community. The uh, primary goal of the CDBG program is to develop viable urban communities and specifically <coughs> most of the funds need to be directed at lower or moderate income residents are spent in lower, low or moderate income areas. I'll just review some of the highlights of the activities that were funded in 2018 and I will note that we are in the, just finished the first year of a five-year strategic plan so in the inner report you'll see a kind of confusing table that tracks our progress for one year and five years and I'm just going to cover what we did in the one year. And over the year, we spent about $575,000, which included some carryover funding from prior years. So affordable housing, of course, is, is a big um, goal of these funds to create affordable housing and also to preserve our existing affordable housing stock. We have a couple of different programs, and the, uh, this year we helped Albany Habitat for Humanity purchase a home that was resold to a low-income homeowner, and then Willamette Neighborhood Housing, now Dev Northwest, completed two uh, down payment assistance loans to help residents become homeowners. Those were with prior year funds. The um, Dev Northwest also operates a housing rehabilitation loan program. These are zero interest deferred loans to help uh, single-family homeowners maintain and improve their homes, mostly elderly uh, residents that have applied. Three projects were completed this year and six or five or six are in works. Homelessness is of course a big issue locally and nationally and reducing and preventing homelessness is something that uh, we, we seek activities that address these issues. Uh, this year, Jackson Street Youth Shelter received funding for shelter operations at their Albany Youth House, and they served 29 Albany youth over the year with shelter. Then Signs of Victory uh, Ministries also received funding for shelter operations, and they served 351 people that received shelter, but many more residents also received um, food boxes. Uh, public services are um, another common activity with these funds, trying to help um, those residents that are primarily low income and, and mostly below 30% of median income for the area. Uh, Family Tree Relief Nursery has received funding in the last couple of years to prevent child abuse, which also helps prevent foster care placements and reducing homelessness and, and violence in the home that may lead to homelessness. Then uh, Furniture Share, they uh, received funding this past year to deliver beds for kids, uh, dining room tables, and healthy food boxes to really help, um, not help people that have recently been homeless that have gotten into homes have a house and make their house a home with furniture. And then the Senior Companion Program, which Cascades West Council of Governments op operates, uh, just a small amount of money went, went to help low-income seniors uh, support other homebound seniors with services and rides to appointments and things like that, serving 19 low-income residents. <laughs> 
And then another uh, area that these funds can be used for is for economic development. So uh, the Lynn Benton Community College Small Business Development Center has used uh, grant funds to offset the cost for low-income residents to take going into business courses. And uh, 10 residents had gone through different courses or received one-on-one -on -one advising, and most of them were actually uh, Latino residents in our community. Then uh, the city has a small grant program, which um, sort of fits a niche in the funding spectrum for small businesses. And uh, three grants were awarded over the year. One is finished, um, Homegrown Oregon Foods, and two are still in works. Um, with some small businesses, and the goal of that program is to create jobs for low and moderate income residents. Uh, improving accessibility and uh, removing blight in neighborhoods is has been an ongoing goal with the Sunrise Park rehabilitation. You may uh, remember that a fair amount of funds were used to rehabilitate this park and that park is getting a lot of use, and we are currently in phase two of that, which is completing a new section of sidewalk and lighting, uh, which will go all the way over to 24th. And then um, the uh, other area of access is access to, uh, to fair housing and to services. And this past year, you may remember that we use funds to provide training for staff and uh, elected officials and appointed officials, and we also um, help train some shelter providers. And just in summary, a snapshot of the residents that we've served this past year, 98% of them were below um, poverty level, and so we're really, uh, these funds are really helping a lot of people with, with the basic needs. Then um, about 12.5% of residents served were um, minorities and that were Latino residents. I um, did want to say that the Community Development Commission held a public hearing on September 16th, and we did hear from uh, two people. Um, Rod Portia, the director of Albany Area Habitat for Humanity, uh, spoke in support of the program and, and thanked the city for um, the funds that they received. and. He did express need for, for more land, so we uh, may get an application from them again. And then Stephanie Lowe, a resident, talked about the need to provide uh, jobs training and skills training and get people employed. So we will be taking, the Community Development Commission will be taking all those comments into consideration. And we would love to hear from you if you have specific suggestions or ideas for how these funds can be used. And, and that's the purpose of the hearing tonight. Any questions? Okay. Any questions of Anne? Okay. And after we do take public testimony, Anne, since you're here, so the council's going to end up needing to, um, when it comes to their, for a motion, they're going to be approving it. I mean, there, usually there isn't any. Mm -hmm. um, is there going to be three action items there? So to consider the comments and to consider um, um, for the second one for the community development needs or will they just be needing to authorize staff to submit the caper? They just need to authorize staff to submit the caper to mm -hmm. um, the <coughs> Department of Housing and Urban Development, which it's a, it's a, the document is here and I just have to submit it electronically okay. to them. It's a requirement, but the second part is important. If you do have comments, uh, those will be incorporated into the report as well as any testimony tonight. So it will be slightly different version that goes to HUD because we have to incorporate these public comments. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone that would like to comment on this, um, on the community development block grant annual report and community needs? Yeah, George. George Matlin. <clears throat> Can you my address? Um, yes, please. 18693 Old Mahama Road, State in Oregon. I want to say that Science Victory is very grateful for the CWG block grant. 
it's helped us in several areas. The 351 people that were on there were unduplicated new clients that were helped with the CDB funds. It's enabled us to provide balanced meals for the individuals staying at the shelter and people that are coming to get food boxes from us. We've been able to uh, help families uh, by locating uh, housing for uh, families. A couple of them, uh, Rob and Misty, were on the road for 12 years, uh, addicts. They had uh, cleaned up, aren't doing drugs anymore, got their own apartment. Another uh, couple, uh, Marcy and her husband and son, <coughs> been on uh, addicts for years and years and years and got cleaned up and now have their own apartment. And we've been able to do it uh, by having the funds to be able to help them pursue housing. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to say thank you so much for the grant and for the help that you're providing to the low income. Okay, great. Any questions? Yeah, questions. Thank you, George. Thank, thank you. you so much. Gail, I think you signed up too. Did you want to say a few words? <clears throat> My name is Gail Meehan. I live at 970 1st Street in Sweet Home. I worked with the ministry 38 years. I'll try not to cry. I am so blessed. This year we have seen major success in families. We have somehow or another received and greeted four different families with autistic children. And if you have not been around a family like that, it's high maintenance, it's a lot of care. We have friends that work in the FACT programs that have come to see about them. Um, People from St. Vincent de Paul, we have lots of community partners. To me, this is thrilling. The fact that we have families that are moving into their own places, many of them are in Albany Partnership for Housing. They've been grateful and gracious to us, and now they have their own places after not having anywhere to live permanent for over 12 years. That's amazing to me, that we actually are seeing extreme results and what we're doing of people going into the community a lot of them have gone to work have a permanent employment now they're back into society again and they're functioning that is a real turnaround in someone's life we work a lot with chance and our different partners and working together is a major key to the results because no one person can do it all we're just really grateful and thankful for CBDG block grant because it has made a major difference in what we're able to offer. We do assessments, we write action plans, we check this once a week to see how they're doing and help give them courage and promote them to go forward. We just want to say thank you. Okay. Thank you. To Any questions Gail. you mm -hmm. have? Questions? Okay. Thank you thank so much. Thank you, Gail for all you and George too, thank you. Um, anyone else that would like to comment on the CDBG annual report community needs? Okay, not seeing anyone. With that, I will close the public hearing at um, 7.53 p.m. And council, what would you, do you have any questions of staff or what would you like to do with this item? No questions. No, no questions. Okay. All right. Did you? Would you like to authorize staff to submit the the um, caper? To HUD. Okay. Yeah, I'd like the, the staff to authorize to submit the to HUD okay. report to HUD. As a motion. Yeah, make a motion to submit the second. Okay. All right, second. All right. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. All right. Thank you, Ann. Okay. Um, next, just before business from the public, I'm going to slip in one little item here. And um, Chief Bradner, I think you were you coming in late just to try to divert any sort of um, 
a few words for you this evening. <laughs> did it work? Did it? Would you like to come forward, please? <coughs> was a little bit worried when I didn't see him in the back of the room before the meeting started and <laughs> thought, oh, is he going to be showing up tonight? So <laughs> yeah, He always shows up at Kiwanis 14 <laughs> seconds before it's time. Yeah. So, Smart so thank you again, Chief. So, okay, uh, next is business from the public. And is there anyone here that would like to bring an item forward to the council? <clears throat> okay. Anyone from the... Church, okay. Uh, can All I ask right. a question here? Yeah. Uh huh. So we're going to be considering uh, what's, what's the name of the name? 401 Main Street Southeast. Mayor, right. we had. Are going to be able to comment on that? Um, this would be the opportunity to, to comment on on it now. So, 
Mayor, we had um, yeah. previously discussed having them present. Uh, they have a short presentation that you. Oh, have. during that item. Okay. Right. So I'll give okay. a staff report and then, and okay. then if that's okay know. with you. So that'll work. So. Yes. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. And anyone else from business from the public? Okay. okay. With that, we will move on to item five, which is the staff report for the city property at 401 Main. <clears throat> I'm just going to start their presentation so they don't have to try to figure it out. Chris the mouse is off. Chris, oh. you're so responsible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just use the clicker. You're up. Nope, me first. Sorry for the confusion. I thought I had cleared no that, problem. but. <laughs> Clearly not. Um, so, thank you, Mayor. So, um, you have a memo in your packet regarding the property, and of course, we've talked about it a few times over the last several years. Um, I'd like to hit just a few highlights um, before the group gives their presentation. So, um, very brief history: the property was purchased about 20 years ago because in the transportation system plan at the time, Santiam Avenue was to be realigned with Fourth in a future road project. When it came time to design that road project, they found that the existing sweeping right turn was the best alignment, and so the property was therefore not needed as a street right of way. So at that time, we started discussing with council options, and I'd like to just highlight a few of the things we've done to try to figure out what to do with this property. Um, while the uh, street project was active, we had funds in the project to either move or demolish the building, depending what happened. We didn't know at the time. And um, there was quite a bit of outcry about de demolishing the building. So we uh, publicly asked for anyone who was interested to use the building, we would pay to move it to their property, and then they could have the building. Um, several people came by, but no one found that the, the um, building would make a viable project for whatever reason um, for their uh, needs. Uh, we had Parks and Rec look at the property and our economic development director at the time. Um, no uh, options really spoke to them, mostly because of the amount of money needed for the property and Parks obviously is limited funding, so uh, nothing happened there. We issued two RFPs for the sale and use of the, of the property neither of which panned out. And we've also had uh, several, not several, a handful of people come forward with ideas of what to do with the, the property as it sits. And none of those uh, worked out either, mostly because parking at the existing site is extremely limited. So we've made a lot of efforts to try to figure out what to do with this property. And, um, and there, there it is. Um, Last year was the last time we were here discussing the property, and at that time, it, the mayor had just um, convened an, an ad hoc work group that discussed at some length what to do here. And the recommendation was to move the church to a city property right down the road and have it um, be used for community and parks programming. However, the council did not direct staff to go to work on that uh, because of funding concerns. Um, and at the same time, a local group came together that wanted to try to raise the funds needed to implement that plan. So the council um, gave a little leeway for them to formalize and start doing their fundraising, and they're here tonight to sh share with you their progress. Um, currently, the street fund pays for everything to do with the property. Um, the monthly utility bills are pretty low. However, there's significant deferred maintenance and at some point in the near future, that's going to be um, expensive and we need to figure out what to do because the street fund, as you know, has far more demands than it has resources right now. Um, so at this point, I think I'll turn it over to the group here and they're, they have a short presentation. You should have copies of their slides and I'll turn it over to Terry. Good 
Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Terry Plagman. My address is 36244 Plagman Drive Northeast, Albany, Oregon. And I'm here tonight representing the Cumberland Community Event Center. We are a group that was created in 2018 to build on the recommendations of the Mayor's ad hoc work group concerning the future and the use of the Cumberland Church. We are a five-member board, three of whom are here tonight, myself, Joel Orton, and Emma Eaton. We're also supported in our efforts right now by architect Bill Riles and Ryan McAllister from T Girding Construction. We also have been working with other professionals as well, uh, including a grant writer and an event planner. We've been asked to come here tonight to give you a status report, and at the same time, we also want to request a commitment from you tonight concerning the use of the property and moving the church onto the property located on Sand Am and Pine, which was what the recommendations were of the, of the Mayor's Ad Hoc Group. We want to use that for the purpose of creating a community event center. Right now, that agreement is really critical for us to move forward with fundraising and with our donors. As far as where we are right now, over the past year, we have created our board. Or as I said, we're a full five-member board. We've adopted bylaws. We are currently in the process of applying for our own 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Right now, in the meantime, we're currently being sponsored by the Albany Parks and Rec Foundation so that we still can accept donations through that entity. We've been hosting some events at the Cumberland Church to show that the church can be used as a community event center and to help raise some awareness. We've, been, we've already retained architect Bill Riles, and we have been working with him on specific plans for the property, some of which you have in the materials in front of you. Uh, we also are working on our own visit, business plan and our own budgets in order to make the property self-sustaining. Of course, we've been doing some fundraising as well. At this point, we have raised approximately $40,000 for the property, um, but also at this point, our donors that we have been speaking to need a commitment from the city council in order for us to move forward. Uh, it's not our intention to ask for funds at all that would have a negative impact on the city's budget. We understand that the city has budget issues right now and it's not our goal to impact that in any way. Our goal is to have a completely self-sustaining facility. Right now as it stands there are two pieces of property um, right now, we have two pieces of property that the city owns. Both of them, the city have owned, has owned for approximately 20 years each. Uh, the property that is located at 401 Main Street was purchased in 2000 by the city of Albany for the street planning project. Uh, the property that's located on Sandy M and Pine was actually purchased by the city of Albany in 1999. Um, it was purchased for $145,000. It was part of a donation, actually, as well, um, to the city of Albany. Both of those have sat idle for approximately 20 years and have been non-functioning at all. Um, our goal is to make both pieces of property functioning assets to the community. By moving the church off of the land where it's currently located on Main Street, that allows that piece of property to be sold or used by the city in other ways that would be more profitable in order to help with the current budget issues. By moving the church onto the property at San Am and Pine, it enhances the functionality of both the building and the park, and it increases safety of the park as well, and improves our city, of course. Uh, it currently is in the City of Albany's comprehensive plan to work on revitalizing the Hackleman and the Willamette River East neighborhood. Creating a community event center next to Hackleman Park will help reduce urban blight in the area, It'll help reduce crime in the park and the surrounding neighborhood. And ultimately, the goal is to make both pieces of property, as I said, assets to the city of Albany. Again, I want to stress, our plan is not to cost you any money at all. Our efforts are to move the church, to restore it, and to manage it afterwards. All of the budgets that we are preparing actually include all of those costs, all of the maintenance costs that are looming ahead over the next five years. The ad hoc work group studied this previously, as was stated by Ms. Bailey, and determined that the property located on San Am and Pine really is the only viable option uh, to move the church to in order to have a community asset going forward. Um, 
and we did pre also prepare some additional information for you to show um, where it sits right now and it's just the property where we want to move it towards. Uh, that property is located, again, it's right next to the skate park on San Am and Pine. Um, and by moving it to that location, we'll be able to have use of the park of Hackman Park as well. And it will, again, like I said, it would be able to be a functioning asset for both pieces of property. It would enhance Hackman Park as well. We have some, or already some diagrams, some of these things were started to be developed by the ad hoc work group and then we've been building on those efforts over the past year. Um, this has a, a diagram of what the over, overall view of the property would look like. Uh, there is some information there on the park that, that is not really necessarily part of our plan, but those were just some additional ideas. But you can see where the church would be located um, as well as parking as well and green space to allow outdoor events to be used. Um, and by having the Hackleman Park right there as well, that allows that to be used as well. And a closer view of what the church would look like, a conceptual layout of the property. Um, and you can see that there is an actually an additional building next to it. And the goal is to be able to have uh, just a, a simple caterer's kitchen. So, so that way it can be used. Our plan is to hopefully use it for events. Um, and to rent it out. That's our goal, to make it self-sustaining. We'll be able to rent it out for events, um, community meetings, social gatherings, birthday parties, weddings, and of course, be able to enhance the parks and rec services that the City of Albany already offers as well. As I said, we have had some events there already, and those events have been well received by the public. Um, However, our use is limited right now based on the condition of the building and um, the facilities that it has currently. And so we really would like to move forward with getting it moved, with having a long-term place to be able to move it to so that that way we can move forward with our efforts and host, host additional events. We have started to develop a timeline as well. As I said, we're already in the process of obtaining our 501c3 status. Uh, we have a different attorney that's on board with us, one who worked, um, has worked with ever, several other projects in Albany as well, worked with the Carousel Project. We're working with him as well in order to create a 501c3 that's already in process. Um, as I said, our goal is that we do need a um, commitment from the city in order for us to be able to move forward. We want to move the church, as I said, onto that property. We've been working with Emmert International. Um, that's the same company that some of you may be familiar with that moved the Borden Bass Bar on a tangent um, as well. So they're very familiar with having to move buildings with and with working with the City of Albany as well. Um, but the important piece that we first need is a commitment from the City of Albany concerning the building and the use of the property on Sandy M and Pine. Um, you and as council members are in a unique position to help with this endeavor by making a commitment to allow us to continue to use the building and to move forward with our efforts so that it can become a community asset, not just for Albany citizens right now, but for generations mm -hmm. in the future. And we're all here to answer questions if you have any. Okay. Thank you, Terry. And questions? Council have any? When do you think your uh, 501C will be established or finalized? Or I actually spoke with the attorney's office twice, actually, this week, and I spoke to them earlier today. Uh, they're finishing up the application materials. There's a few additional information that they need. Uh, we have to, they have, we're scheduling a board training for the board members coming up in October, and the application will be submitted to the IRS right after that. So hopefully the goal is to have that completed by the first of the year or around the first of the year. Uh, right now, as I said, we're already sponsored with the Parks and, with Albany Parks and Rec Foundation. We have a sponsorship through them, so that that way people can donate right now already through that foundation. Um, one of the things I do want to make sure to point out, part of the agreement with the Parks and Rec is that uh, with them sponsoring us, the City of Albany actually gets to keep 5% of those funds. So we have uh, pledges of $40,000, but we have $30,000 that already has been received, and the City of Albany has received that 5%. So we are actually contributing to the use of the property as well. Mm -hmm. 
Well, or is it the Parks and Rec Foundation the that Parks keeps the found the That's right. That's Parks and Rec. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Other questions? I'd like to make a comment. Mm -hmm. I appreciate all the work you're doing, but I kind of think you took a lot for granted that this was going to happen. Um, I think there were many counselors who didn't want didn't want it to be moved on the property. If you wanted to refurbish it, buy it, fine, move it somewhere else. But I, I mean, <coughs> you did a lot of work by assuming. And um, I really, I mean, I myself just uh, don't, I mean, for a whole year for raising $30,000, I guess it's okay. You have to have the commitment, but still, I just don't think it should be on city property. If you're going to do it, I think you need to um, do it on a piece of property that you buy and you can move it to. That's just how I feel. I'm sorry. And, and, um, I, I, and I, I, I understand that, Ms. Johnson. Um, our group was, was an outshoot of the mayor's ad hoc committee, and the, the recommendation of the ad hoc committee were, was to move it onto the property on San Am and Pine, and that's what we've been working towards. Yeah, that so property's been empty for 20 years. We didn't ever say, go ahead and no. do that. No. So you're assuming a lot and well, put a lot of work I, into something. But wasn't, last, wasn't it told to, to raise some money? I think that's what was um, Actually, mentioned, to raise money for. Mm -hmm. Mayor, we, we were pretty, pretty adamant that uh -huh. we didn't want to have uh, city involvement in it. Yeah. And part of that city involvement, depending on who was talking at the time, was uh, we don't want to have it go on city property. Um, I want to buy the property, even at a bargain basement deal. Okay, fine. Um, or at least that portion that the, that the um, building sits on. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I guess I, I want to make sure that we could, in fact, uh, depending on how it's set up. Um, part of it was a donation to the city and what the codicils on that donation were. Uh, do we have the right to sell it? Do we have the right to use it for anything except what they said? And I don't know what it was that they said. Um, and is there, you know, and I think someone is standing, yeah. We've met yet. Um, Kim Ladane, Park and Rec Director. Can, totally can somebody find record. the lady a chair down there? <laughs> oh, no. It's, you can't make it. Thank you. a whole bunch of chairs. Here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So that's something that we can definitely look into. Um, the deed is, is yeah. taking a look at it and making sure that the appropriate use that it was designated for recreation community involvement still meets the same. Um, I know that's a conversation that I'm willing to have um, with the with the grantors. Um, it would just be under direction of council and the mayor to, to explore that area. But that would be something, we've had good conversation about um, the zero amount of maintenance or support we would be able to provide should it move to that area. <clears throat> Um, and so that would be the well, next logical. It was all, also pretty clear that we didn't want to spend any money in the interim. Mm -hmm. And we find out that, in fact, it wasn't a lot of money, but it was, in fact, money that we were spending right along, um, providing gas and electric and whatever else. Well, Councillor, um, uh, honestly, we've, you know, we've owned that building for 20 years, and, you know, it was previously rented to a small congregation for a tiny amount of money, and the city has always been responsible for the utilities. Well, so it doesn't make any difference what it was in the past. It was the fact that when the council was talking about it, we set down some parameters. Mm -hmm. um, now, the parameters are not set in stone, but the bottom line is, we, I think things have to be negotiated. I would be unwilling to give. Uh, property for somebody's um, parking lot. I mean, you know, if there is a shared parking lot, great, fine. Uh, you want to put a parking lot in and then it's a public parking lot, okay. I don't know <clears> if there's a whole lot of parking that needs to happen other than to Hackleman Park, but um, I wouldn't want to see a thing that happened where uh, we donate the property and you folks put in a parking lot and they say, no, this is a private parking lot, when 
um, it was city property that was donated. I mean, that things like that need to be worked out. Uh, the portion, you want the building? As far as I'm concerned, it's yours. Um, you know, a dollar, and I'll give you the dollar, I think is what I said before. Um, but uh, moving it, um, I mean, the fact that you're stepping up for the movement and, and the maintenance and all that, that's, I think, what needs to happen. Well, if I could just interject, mm -hmm. this, this proposed location is pretty critical. Uh, the work that the uh, ad hoc work group had done before they explored a number of different alternative locations, this one was identified because it's so close to the existing location. Very little uh, interruption of utility lines and that kind of thing to get it moved the 500 or so feet. And so that's, that's why we have really focused on this property. And also we had heard that there might be con conditions upon, you know, that uh, the property, the funds for the property were donated with certain conditions that it be used for public purposes. So it seemed like a perfect fit. So Sean, would this be a, t a tax lot for the city? Will it be a tax? Yeah, will, it, will it bring revenue to the city as far as no, taxes? If, if it's a nonprofit that they're receiving, then it wouldn't, we wouldn't be getting property taxes on it. Oh. Okay. We, well, I just want to make sure I understood that. Unless they're renting it out. If, it, if it's for profit, then. If they're I mean, renting it out, then that could, could violate their income private income that you're, that you're making, a, making a profit. Nonprofits make a profit all the time. Right. Yeah. I mean, nonprofit is, is a function of how you're set up with the IRS, not whether or not you make a profit. Almost every nonprofit wants to make a profit. Every business wants to make a profit. But a nonprofit can still rent out something and still be a nonprofit. Right. But all the yeah. money has to be going back to the nonprofit. Right. right. Um, mm -hmm. So if it's same situation with a church, and if if you are renting it out at at rates, you end up having to do tax work. Um, if you're renting it for a for-profit, if you rent it out to a non-profit, you don't have to. It's for for-profit. And Chris well, might. This is in the yeah. weeds. Yeah. It's all in the, it's an accounting pro process. Right. So, I mean, um, it, but, like Rich said, it's in the weeds. Mm -hmm. But refresh my memory. I, the last time that we discussed this topic, um, I thought council gave direction. They didn't want any money spent on the church, but it was for them to raise the money. Yes, Mayor. Right. I, so I yeah. looked up the That's last, the, um, the minutes from the mm -hmm. last time we were here because, you know, I couldn't quite remember either. And there was mm -hmm. a motion to direct staff to try to find private property that would take the building. Mm -hmm. And that has, once again, been unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. um, but there was also discussion that it would be okay, there was not a motion, but there was discussion from the council that it would be fine to let this group try to see if they could raise the money because we were discussing um, the ad hoc group's recommendations of moving the church. And there was a lot of back and forth about how that would be paid for and it would need to be moved before any real work could be done to it because, um, you know, just the, the size of the lot and the uh, um, condition of the building. So the, the group at the time was just, I think, four people who were starting to come together with a concept. And so the council did say they would be okay, although there was not a motion um, with giving them time to start putting themselves together. So then after that, we wrote a little, um, basically a little memorandum of understanding that they could use the building. And I coordinate with them pretty closely about what's happening and what they can and can't do. So that's how it, this has been going along. The council direction was, if you want to move the church, that's fine, but the city is not going to pay for that. And I don't remember hearing not one penny of city money should be paid for the maintenance of the church. Otherwise, I probably would have um, asked some questions about <coughs> ongoing utilities because we, we only pay for power and gas. And honestly, if we turn the power off the building, that would be probably detrimental to 
the safety of that mm -hmm. of that lot. So that that's could I ask there. how uh, is the money still there that was allocated to take care of the building? That you mentioned at the start of your uh, comments earlier. No, that was programmed as part of the capital project for the street project because at yes. the time when they, we funded the project, we thought the building would have to be knocked down. Right. And so there was money there for that purpose. And then right. when the council discussed moving it instead, then we, um, I think I put an article in the paper and put news releases out. Marilyn's nodding, so I'm feeling good about this. That we were asking people to contact me if they wanted the building we would pay to move it and so that's as i said i had a few people but no no takers but that money's gone when the capital project finished you know that money goes back to the street fund whatever's left over from that project so no there's not designated money to move the building mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. yeah. well, i appreciate your comments to the effect that this the council said at the time, we don't want to have anything to do with the moving of the church. Mm -hmm. And I thought, my impression was that they felt that the location on city property, uh, park property, and that, uh, that that would be okay if uh, the, somebody else took the responsibility of getting it moved over there. And now, the, is that kind of what the proposal is tonight? Yeah, that is, is that what our proposal you, is. You're going to be able to uh, figure out how to get the building over yeah. to the apartment. Yes, that's exactly what our proposal is. So we, it seems to me working. that's what we asked you to do. And here you come saying you're going to be able to do it. And now, are we going to bring up new requirements and say, oh, we're going to have to do this, that, and the other thing? It seems like you're moving the goalposts. If you're if you're pointing that at me, what I'm saying is well, there were a number of people who said it should be on property other than this. Exactly. Oh, I don't recall. I'm saying at this I point, do. I don't remember that. Well, I do. Others do. Um, we didn't put it down on paper. No. And I don't think at this point, I think what we need to do is decide what we want to do. Well, okay. from okay. my from my perspective. Um, a very cheap price as long as we can, as long as we have the right to do it. A very cheap price for the, the space underneath the church is fine for me. Um, and you can probably get people to donate that. Uh, I'm confused. If you look at, you you look part, at their part, plan, part there, there is yeah. Yeah. where we're moving it to. If you look at their plan, there's a place for the church and then there's a much larger area of of that that has to do with um, park yeah that is part of the park is at this point or is part of our place. property at this point and there's parking on it and there's other things on it and see and that can all be worked out in an agreement with the city so I mean you can be able to if you're wanting to just have ownership underneath the the footprint of the building that's part that can be worked out yeah. um, with an agreement and between I have no the nonprofit issue with that. and the city. As long as, as long as we come to an agreement so we have enough people to say, yep, that works for me, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. No. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have, I want these folks who have a passion for this mm -hmm. to be the ones in charge of it who are running down the road. I don't want the city to be the ones who sit there and, oh, gee, we need something, you know. I mean, they have a passion for it. People with a passion for it do a heck of a lot better job from people whose job it is. That's just the way life is. I mean, you know. Well, um, Bill has his. Uh, well, I think Mike did first. Yeah. Did you Mike? I, I'm, I'm very, very patient. <laughs> but um, here's the If we. You're a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> We won't go there. If we can sell the church to this group when they have their 5013C or whatever, their nonprofit established, we can sell the building to them. That way it comes off the city re uh, registration. Yeah. They're responsible for the upkeep and everything else of the building at that point. Okay? Then we have no, no liability for it. Sell it to them. 
like what Rick said, for a dollar, and I'll give them the dollar. Oh, they'll need a dollar profit. That's right. It's two bucks now. Yeah. And then on the city property that's already there that they intend to move it to or want to move it to or was a rec recommendation of the ad hoc building, is we we find a reasonable price to sell that land to them also. Then when they move the church to that building, that 5013C becomes the owner. the owner of the land and the building, and they take on the liability for the operation of that property, and it's no longer on the city rolls, and they do with it what they want. We can, <coughs> we can find a, a reason, I know we can find a reasonable price for the land, whether it includes the parking lot or doesn't include the parking lot, whatever it may be, and get that in writing. It's <coughs> theirs. It goes under their 5013C. We're no longer responsible for it, and we're done. That's where I'm at. I'm with him. Thank you. <laughs> Any comments? Yeah. Bill, did you have something? So one of the short-term <coughs> goals is to execute this agreement with the city. Has there been any preliminary discussions with Peter or Sean on this? No. I don't think we can do anything until their 5013C is, is established. Right. And then, then, then we can't can finalize forward. anything. We yeah. should yeah. agree to it. We can get that so going. There's, <coughs> there's just been no discussion. Um, yeah, I think the devil's in the details, as, as Rich or somebody mentioned, to, to see what what we can do with with the property if it was donated or if we bought it we can do whatever we want if if it can be you know sean can you deed a small piece of it you know there's details in that so i, I think we're on the right track but like i said the, yeah. the devil is going to be in, in the detail well so real would quick. the council want to consider maybe with a motion would be to direct staff to bring back an agreement with the Cumberland <coughs> nonprofit 501c3 that means when they've got their 501c3 status um, then an agreement would come back to the council so then, I like what Richard mentioned about the parking lot and the, the building the ground <coughs> the building maybe two options to see what both of them would look like uh, mm -hmm. to see what it would be and then come up with a reasonable price to sell that property to them at a reduced price or whatever, because that property has been sitting empty for how long? Yeah, 20 years. 20 years. The, the property has <coughs> yeah, been there for 20 years, which you should also take into consideration when selling it, is um, we have been deferring any maintenance on it. We should have been take, doing maintenance on this building the past 20 years. So the condition oh, is going to cost more to renovate it because of our neglect that's for the past I'm, I'm talking years. about the property, I'm talking about the proposed property yeah. for it to be moved to. Right. So, but I think when it comes, yeah. when it comes down for you figuring out a price down the road, that should be taken into well, consideration. We're well, not taking the sake of the, building, talking about the price anything. of the vacant lot over there that we want to move it to. <coughs> right, Dick. But I'm saying that should be taken into consideration when we get to that is really we deferred maintenance on this for 20 years and it's going to cost more to renovate it yeah, because I of our neglect. I don't think we need to get into that. So. But it's been there for 20 years. Someone time. could have I'm, come I'm up ju then. I'm just making a point. The I condition it. today is part of our responsibility. <coughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you. And I don't think Rich is more joking when he says sell it to them for a dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can have the church. I mean, you can't get a better price than that. So you're talking about the building or you're talking about the chunk of property? The, the building, building for the building a buck. For a buck. building for a buck. And I'll throw a dollar in. I got some quarters in my ass. I don't think the city needs to make I'm talking about the, the property <coughs> when we set a price tag for the property take they don't want to buy the property so yeah that's my they don't want to buy the property the church sits on they just no, no, the no. The we're talking about the property the, well, you just property said we're talking about the building so now i'm the property on pine yeah the property by hackleman yeah. district yeah. is right. the property that yeah. i'm talking okay. about so. and you're talking about the square footage of the church that it sits on is that correct or what square about five. the square footage that or it sits on that property? A little ways around it, whatever, so it's usable. No. Mm -hmm. So we would maintain the property. No. They have the church. No. I no. think once the church no. is moved, we can sell that we'll property. We'll be bringing yeah. back an once, agreement. Once they have it, it's theirs. They do the maintenance. They do the everything. On the building. No. On the they building and the once so they have the, the, property, the, the property underneath it at the, the new, new location, property. it's their baby. We're, so, not, 
when they have so it's, when it's, it's moved. Yeah. So may I the, there's a lot of details to an agreement that needs to be worked out. May I suggest then that you task us with bringing back an agreement that allows for the transfer of the property to the, the building to the nonprofit, which would leave the existing property on which it sits for sale by the city. Correct. Right. And the building would be moved to the property at Pine, mm -hmm. and Correct. and and, uh, and the organization would work out with us a purchase price for that property. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And can I throw another monkey wrench into it? Yes. What's the marine <laughs> thing? <laughs> oh, it must be the shirt. Um, Park SDCs. Is that? property in the long term or the long range goals and commitments for park SDCs or park SDCs could be used? At this time we do not have any projects slated for that property. Um, even okay. in talking through the master plan at this point it would remain a vacant lot. All right, thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What did we put in the CIP though? I thought we put something in our five year CIP. I can double check but... Um, CIP can be used for other things. Mm -hmm. I can double check on that. Yeah, but it would be if it's in a project identified, it's eligible for parks STC. So, I mean, it's something to consider if it's going to be a public parking lot, that is something that can be public used with parks lot, yes. STCs. But, but I think yeah. what Peter said, we can move forward with, can we not? Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And That's yeah. three, Coming probably back four, <laughs> maybe four and a quarter. Okay. Come on, Bessie. So, so do you want to have a, we need a formal motion. Please. I'd like to make a motion that the staff work with the Cumberland, Save Our Cumberland Church group to come up with a plan for the moving of the property, purchase of the, the purchase of the property, purchase of the property, and transfer of the church to the Cumberland. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. Let's do that. Transfer. Yep. Yeah, to Pine. And <clears throat> just so I can be, I can clarify for me and Terry, because I, I don't know if me and Terry will be working on this or the your attorney who's doing the 501. Probably so not. the intent is that the that the city will sell the church for a dollar, then the city will also sell the property that the church is going to be moved to, and we'll negotiate a price for that, and that, that that's how we're going to work right. this. And I want to make sure. Right. Well, if I'm the good, doing a, a deal with this, I want to make sure that the property is purchased before the pr the church is moved to it, because otherwise we're, yeah, we're still liable for it. Okay, I just want to okay. eliminate the liability. Correct, correct. Uh, see, excuse me for interjecting, yeah. but I think, mm -hmm. sorry. There, there is, I think, still a question as to whether the city can sell this property or right. under what conditions they can. That probably needs to be researched. Yeah, they're going to do that. That will okay. be part of that. Yeah, yeah right. they'll be Thank doing that. That'll, that'll be part of the discussion. Okay. Right. And then the agreement to come back, though, would be timing of when you transfer the dollar church. Mm -hmm. can I, because well, actually... That has to we, be when they're right. And just see, yeah. Right, but also when they're ready to probably How big is this move. property? Mm -hmm. How big is okay. the property on that we're moving this to? Big. Uh, I mean, I, I'm looking at it, but That's I don't know. That's one point seven five acres, was it? Six, I think. Yeah. Okay. I think it's one point six nine in here. I yeah. thought. Okay. Yeah. So then there's some some room to oh, yeah. look, change it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will second the motion. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? And Allison, do you have it clear on the motion? I believe I do. Thank you. Okay. All clear right. as mud. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Okay, and that's one no. So, okay. All right, folks. Thank you very like much. We're getting moving thank forward you for there. Thank so, you very much. Yep, yeah, thank yeah, you. The, the question is yeah. does that give you the commitment then? To give you the, uh, it, what you needed to go it, forward? It, it allows us to talk to our donors and give more information to them. Right. So, All right. Yep. So, was yeah. a help tonight, not a hindrance. Yep, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the whole team you have working on it. So, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, next council. Um, this is adoption of a resolution. This is on page 66, and this is with exempting competitive bidding requirements <coughs> for a sewer inspection vehicle. Whose is this one? Okay, <laughs> sewer inspection people. So. Good evening, yeah. Mayor, Council. I'm Kristen Preston, the Wastewater Superintendent, and I'd like to introduce Jeff Gill. Uh, some of you may not know him. He's our Wastewater Collections Supervisor. 
Um, you've been with the city like 16 years, so many you might know him, but he doesn't come before council very often. Um, so he's um, done the bulk of the work on this um, proposed um, procurement and the resolution before you, so I'm going to let him go over the details. Good evening. Um, so I'll be discussing the purchase of a 2019 Q's closed circuit television van uh, or CCTV van. Basically what a CCTV van is, is uh, the equipment we use to inspect all of our sewer and storm pipes. Um, and it is the most important piece of equipment in our pipe assessment program. Uh, currently the collections crew has two CCTV vans, a 2012 Q's van and a 2000 uh, Aries van. The Aries van is now nearly 20 years old. It has a hot and increased maintenance cost, and the technology is no longer supported um, by the manufacturer. Um, with the purchase of this uh, 2019 Q's van, we'll uh, standardize our uh, inspection equipment, which will cut back on downtime, and it will allow us to do inspections on larger diameter pipe, which was previously um, handled by contractors. Um, the Method, uh, the method we'd like to use to pay for this is the Houston Galveston Area Council of Government, or HGAC. Um, this is so that we get the very best price for this equipment. Um, the overall price for this equipment is $2,224,038. Uh, we're going to uh, pay for it with a combination of the Wastewater Collection Equipment Replacement Fund and the Stormwater Equipment Replacement Fund. Uh, we estimate we'll have, uh, once we send the Aries van to surplus, we'll get about $12,000 for that. And we've done some other estimates on savings once we purchase the van, um, and that's between $100,000 to $140,000 each biennium, because we will no longer be uh, using contractors for our large diameter inspections and maintenance. Um, staff recommends council approve the resolution and exemption for competitive bidding for the purchase of the new CCTV van through an existing cooperative contract with HGAC and declare the existing van a surplus equipment. At this time, are there any questions? Yes. Yep, French. Is there any organization that also sells this stuff besides going through the Houston folks? Well, as far as if you were to work directly with the dealer, there's maybe a dozen throughout the entire world, and there's only maybe two of them stationed out of the United States. The rest are all out of Germany. And this is real specialized equipment, so you can't get it from local, de local dealers. Um, the Aries van, uh, is that different equipment, different equipment than the Hughes van? Is it, um, is the, running through the pipes different equipment or is it different uh, brand name um the equipment's uh, similar but when we bought this area's equipment 2000 you know back in 2000 it's um, well past the Useful. age of being you know they don't make parts for it anymore we can't get it fixed um so we it's just more of a, a more modern version of that old equipment our other van is a, a Q's van and it takes a certain type of software to um, look at the, the video and analyze it and produce the report. So we'd like to have the same type of equipment on both pieces of, of, of the understand. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Jill. And if I understand it, HGAC went through the, <coughs> excuse me, the competitive bid process, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I, I'm somewhat familiar with how those, how those work. So it, it's not like, it's a little deceiving, you know, it's not like we're trying to avoid the competitive bid process. Of another agency has already done the legwork and we need to take advantage of that. Right, mm -hmm. and we did this with the, I think the last couple of back trucks also. I, I don't know if it was fire engines and yeah. other things as well. So yeah. There are no problem. My concern <clears throat> is, is that if there is, a, if there is not a local distributor of this, okay, fine. But if there is a local distributor of something that we then use a, an outside bid source on, we're simply taking money away from people here locally and throwing it at somebody in Houston or someplace sure. else. Uh, the local people sell the same thing. We've come across this with, with furniture or something that is equivalent. 
and local people miss out on it because they don't have, they're not connected with that bid. Mm -hmm. They don't get a chance to bid on it. And even though it's our money, local money doing it. And uh, this doesn't happen to be that situation, but it's one that comes back every once in a while. And every time it comes up, I am going to go sideways. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, if there was something local, we would certainly consider it. And this, um, it is a national cooperative purchasing thing, so I think everyone has opportunity to, to bid on those. Hey, Kristen, is the co the contract for the purchasing is through Hughes, uh, through uh, Houston, Galveston, but the purchasing is from somebody in here locally, right? It's like, a, isn't it Springfield? Uh, well, no, Keys is out of Portland, but Portland, yeah, locally so to Oregon, yes. Yeah, it's local to Oregon, the purchasing. Yeah. Well, Portland is better than Houston, but it's not much better than Houston. <laughs> yeah, but at least it's what's well, the same opinion. Well, wow, look, it actually looks like they're out of Florida. They probably have an office in Portland. Yeah, they yeah. have a local office in Portland, but yeah, I think it's out of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, there's a resolution on page 68. I'll move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Okay, any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Okay, next, Chief, you've got an item here. Your last one, your last council meeting, and it's awarding of a contract. <laughs> Correct. Well, for one last time, <laughs> excuse me, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'll make this short and sweet. The, uh, the memo basically sums it up and says it all. Uh, we did a RFP process to um, try and select a new vendor to provide emergency vehicle fleet maintenance. Uh, we went through that process. The results are... Um, on page 74 mm -hmm. of that selection process. We had two um, qualified bidders that bid on that, and we would tonight like uh, your approval to go ahead and award the contract to Hughes Fire Equipment out of, uh, their base office is out of Springfield, but as you can see from the memo, uh, they're located throughout the Northwest and other places as well. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. They said there was an Albany location? There is, yes. They. Okay. They started leasing our space, our shop, out behind Station 13 that's been vacant. I mean, we've been using it for storage, but it hasn't been used as a shop for the last number of years. And they started, oh, uh, six months ago, probably, okay. roughly. Using Sounds them. like a win-win. It is, most definitely. That way we're so, not taking something to Corvallis or someplace else, using the time, getting it there, and the fuel, and the energy, and the effort, and et cetera. Correct. So, use that. So are we renting that shop for... Are there stuff? Answer well, Say that again. Are we renting that shop to them? Is that yes, we are. Yeah. So users yeah. actually have facility here now. Correct. They have a facility yeah. here now and okay. mechanics in that shop. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, are they? You said they're renting that space from the city of Albany. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Are we stabbing them big time? Oh no, no, no. 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 So it's a good cooperative relationship. So, chief, are they able to? Do everything right in the shop, or is there a chance? Because I noticed, you know, the bid wasn't, you know, price per hour wasn't that different. But if you have to take things down to Springfield for any reason, yeah. the closest one, can they do everything where you are? So the vast majority of it they'll be able to do in our shop. Uh, if it's a larger job, a, a transmission, or replacing the engine, something like that, they may need to take it down to Springfield for that. Okay, and then so they tow it down at. Your expense, or do we? So we pay for that, I'm sure. Uh, well, we, it's, it's our vehicle, so it would probably be at our expense mm -hmm. if it was being towed down. Wherever it needed to be towed to, it would end up uh, being our expense. But the vast majority of the repairs will be done here in Albany. Okay. Yeah, because I looked on online um, and everything, trying to find. So. <laughs> they said there was an Albany, you know, office, and I couldn't find anything. Yeah, they probably don't advertise it, uh, partly because it's it's relatively new. It's just within the last you know, four to six months that they started utilizing that so space. So it's not just for us, it's for, I mean, it's an actual business that's going to take in other... They will do repairs for neighboring fire departments and fire districts uh, as they need to have equipment uh, replaced. They won't just be exclusive to Albany Fire. Okay. Um, they'll, they'll, they will do service for other vehicles as well. 
Uh, yeah. Fortunately, we don't have enough business to keep them busy all the time. Yeah, well, that would, yeah, that's where I was kind of going, you yeah. know, like, okay, are they an actual business where they do, like, private people, private uh, automobiles or private no, trucks? No, no. They do specialize in emer emergency equipment, emergency okay. vehicles. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Is this going to problem a logistics problem in your in that facility as far as the, the storage of vehicles and things like that? Yeah. No, uh, through our agreement that we entered with them, they have a set amount of space that they can take up, and we negotiated that so it wouldn't interfere with our operations. Yeah, that's, what I'm, that's my concern. Thank you. Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. There's a resolution on page 73. Will we adopt the resolution on page 73? Second. Okay. Any more discussion? No. That's good. All Thank those you. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. Okay. Thank you, Chief. You bet. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Yep. You You're bet. last. And I just want to say thank yeah. you for the council support of the fire department yeah. uh, throughout my 30 years. I really do appreciate it. Well, we're really thank grateful you. for the service that yeah. your team has provided. So. You yeah. It's thank been you. fun to support the fire department. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Just kind of keep in touch. Okay. We we'll know where you live. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Probably. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, next is adoption of the consent calendar. There's only a few items on there. If there isn't any items needing to be removed this evening, I'll entertain a motion. I have a concern about the first uh, August 14th minutes. Okay. It you says that down on adoption of resolutions. Uh, this might need to be corrected. Coburn moved to adopt the resolution and Coburn seconded it on both of those. <laughs> Very efficient. <laughs> So that's great job, Bill. Appreciate it. Yeah. So I don't know. All. <laughs> Somebody else did that. Yeah. Both on one and two. Yeah, both on one and two. Okay. So they can make make note of those corrections on that. Okay. Anything else? That's all I saw. Okay. Motion. Move to approve. Move to approve. With the corrections. With yeah, with corrections. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right, on the back page is business from the council. Bessie, anything this evening? No, not too much. Okay, Bill? Nothing, thank you. Dick? Um, I was talking to one of my constituents, and they uh, said, uh, are we to welcome the uh, river keepers uh, next time they come down the river? We want to stop at Albany, or are we going to say, why don't you just keep on going? Well, I wonder what the council feels about that. You know, we have an accidental spillage of a very small, I think, small amount of sewage. They don't even know about it until I read about it in the paper, and then they, are they still going to sue us? Do we know? We're, we're actually have a meeting with them scheduled uh, October, 9th. October 9th up in Portland. So we'll um, so we're going back. So yeah, we're going to be negotiating with them and discussing it with their attorneys up okay. in Portland. So nothing's been filed though. I well, I know you're supposed to try and keep your enemies close, but uh, I've never been very good at that, as you all know. So uh, yeah, I'd like to tell them to just keep on going. Well, there there is to to your point. Uh, there is the feeling that you know if they're going to do this, you know, why should we smile at them? Yeah. I mean, they're doing it just to get money. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, it's not like we tried to do something, and when we found out there was a problem, we got right after fixing it right away. I mean, it was because the water came up and knocked the end of the pipe <coughs> that it happened to begin with. So... Off a dollar. Yeah. And it's not like we haven't been trying to do the best we can with new sewage disposal plants. Of course, it didn't work, but... Uh, uh, we did our gardens, yes. and um, talking about our gardens, they're uh, trying to get the water not only clean but cool. <coughs> they did well, not quite as we hoped. Our, our attorneys are aware of all the efforts that the city has made over time to yeah. comply and work towards the same goal that they're working for, which is clean water. Yeah. So I would ask, just just let us uh, meet with them on the ninth, mm -hmm. come back to you, and debrief you, and we can decide from there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I'd like to express that I'm not very happy. And when they ask me for money, I'm going to write them back and say, take me off your list. I'm mm -hmm. tired of it. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Dick? No. Okay. Rich? I do. 
The other day I stopped to buy uh, the location on Scrabble Hill that we went to Luba over, uh, the now chicken farm. Um, people that are there, it's not going to be a chicken farm going to foster farms. This is going to be a chicken farm laying eggs. Uh, the first batch of chicken shows up, the first 4,000 chickens show up um, in November. Uh, they'll be producing about 300 dozen eggs a day. Um, and, you know, once it gets going, I'll have to take a look at it and see. It's kind of 300, you said 300 4, dozen. dozen. Oh, oh 4,000. Okay. 4, 4, I was going to say, boy, those, yeah. those are lazy chickens. Um, <laughs> Sorry. And so I ask him pretty pointed questions about, so how come? And uh, I ask him, well, did <coughs> were you thinking about doing this before? And he said, well, they didn't even own the land then, because the, they're using their land to take egress to the back piece of land. Um, and if we would have, well, if they could have built the house, that's we wouldn't have done it. So, kind of the law of unintended consequences. Well, we got to get our eggs somewhere. I guess they'll be locally now. Well, if you're the neighbor next to 4,000 chickens that, uh, that didn't have to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a new place to get fertilizer. Mm. Once yeah. every few months. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rich, I'm so sorry, Rich, since you were there, are they all going to be housed or are they going to be free roaming? They're both. Okay. Um, they're free range. Caged. Yeah. They're not caged. They're not. And there's a, they're, they're kind of the places where they, where they lay are in the middle. And okay. there's these little troughs and stuff that take the eggs from them down to a belt that goes down to the end and it goes into yeah. refrigeration. And the, mm -hmm. and the company picks them up, I can't remember the name, but you see it at maybe it's Winco and maybe it's EB? Uh, the, the, the brand of eggs. EB? Huh? EB? No. It's best? No. No. Um, but they're free range. Okay. So they can run around outside. They're going to have a hawk problem here shortly. Yeah. Because yeah, I was going to say. All oh. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch. Okay. Anything else, Rich? That's it. Okay. All right. Alex? Um, Friday night, West Albany's playing South Albany in the football game in West Albany. Wow. Go, go check it out. Where is it going to be? Oh, at West Albany. At West? Mm -hmm. They have their Civil War, War the games game. this, this early in the season? The weather, was, the, everything we laid out, it's kind of weird this year. So. Yeah. What yeah. time of day is, does it start? Always seven. Friday at 7. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. All right, Mike. Anything? Negative. And all I have is League of Oregon City's conference in the morning, so um, be heading out early. And so will you, Peter? Yes, and do you have anything else? Just to just to note that Chief Bradner's retirement is at two o'clock on Monday. Uh, we'll be celebrating with him down at Station Eleven. And then in your agenda, it says that your next meeting is October seventh at four p.m., but that's incorrect. It's at three p.m. as we start interviews for municipal judge. And Peter, didn't just someone right. say that we should be here maybe about 2.45 to get I instructions had, I meant, or something? I mentioned that. I would yeah, say we, at least 2.45. We've given you some time yeah. to, to get together before you start your first interview, mm -hmm. but the mayor had suggested you might want a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I've got, that's what I've got I think down. it's good. And to okay. go, you know, review the questions and all that. Yes. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I think Jorge has something. Yeah, I just have a five-minute <laughs> uh, video here. Uh, it's with regards to the streets. Uh, staff wanted to show uh, some work that Matt Harrington did uh, to uh, be able to provide more information to the council and to the residents about uh, sh sharing information about streets. So it's, it'll be five minutes total, so I'll just run them here so you can no see. No doubt you've seen roads with cracks, bumps, or potholes. Albany and cities around the country struggle with how to keep our streets in good shape. It takes money, and because that's limited, we have to choose where we get the most from that investment. Streets come in three types, arterial, collector, and local or residential. Arterials like 34th or Queen 
and collector streets like Elm or Washington are used by most of the vehicle traffic in Albany. The city of Albany is responsible for over 33 miles of arterials and collectors and 150 miles of local streets. Next, we'll learn how street condition is rated. Street condition is rated on a standardized scale called the Pavement Condition Index, or PCI. A street rated less than 10 PCI rates as failed. At PCI 100, the rating is good. On average, Albany streets are in fair condition. In 2017, the City Council set a goal to maintain all arterial and collector streets in fair or better condition with a minimum PCI of 60. Without financial resources dedicated to street maintenance, the average PCI in Albany is expected to drop over time. Next, we'll see what goes into making a street. Streets are made in layers. First, crushed rock, then concrete curbs and gutters. Flexible asphalt pavement help distribute the weight of vehicle traffic. And finally, a top layer of stiffer asphalt to resist rubbing. As pavements age, streets can be repaired in different ways. If the pavement is still in good condition, slurry seal, a mixture of oil and coarse sand, can be used to seal small cracks, restore skin resistance, and protect the asphalt from further damage. If there is minimal rutting and cracking in the top layer of asphalt, it is removed with the help of a specialized grinding machine, and a new top layer is inlaid. If the pavement has deteriorated, but the curbs and gutters are still in good shape, rehabilitation can occur, and all asphalt layers are removed and replaced. If there is more extensive damage, the street will have to be completely rebuilt. Next, let's explore the best strategy for maintaining streets. Don't drive on. A street that's in bad shape costs a lot more to bring back to good condition than one that isn't too far gone. A smart maintenance strategy is to renovate or renew roads in small increments every eight to 10 years. This prevents more costly fixes that can occur if no incremental maintenance is done. The bottom line, it's more cost effective <coughs> to keep good roads good. But Albany, like many other cities, doesn't have all the financial resources to get all of our streets to good condition or better. How should we decide which streets are fixed first? Streets are vital to our economy, especially arterials and collectors. Not only do they carry us to school, work, and home, but they also help deliver goods to stores and send products from Albany businesses around the world. The 33 miles of arterials and collectors that the city is responsible for are some of our most vital assets. While everyone would love to have the street where they live be at the top of the repair list, <coughs> it makes sense to concentrate first on these arterials and collectors that keep Albany in business. So, the, yeah. this is uh, some videos that uh, Matt put together and uh, one of the things is just to uh, conduct some outreach when we're, the council is ready. So, just wanted to make sure that the council was aware of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, is this going to go on? They're posted on the website now. Yeah. yeah. It's under Public Works Streets. Mm -hmm. They're posted there. So, can yeah. we get it? How about, how about on Gentlemen. TV? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we will be putting them on 28. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure the council saw them first and they were okay before we start. Yeah, it's good. Very well done. They're also being distributed um, one every week for five weeks on our social media channels. Mm -hmm. Very well done. This is week yeah. number three, I think. Yep. Great. Good job. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll Keep playing it over and over on channel 28. So. Well, <laughs> and right. just a hint, when you see it on social media, if you if it's able to be shared, yeah, yeah. share it because that way you you're one of a hundred or two hundred people. It goes out to then your however many friends you have, which goes out to them, and you know pretty soon it gets clear across real quick. Yep. 
Okay. All right. Anything else staff have? So. Okay, with that, our next meeting, as we had talked about, October 7th, and the next um, regular meeting is October 9th. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you.